Started off with a resin tray, ended up with a dragon. Didn't really go as planned, but super happy with the results. Come check this out. Howdy, howdy, this is Clara Lawrence. All right, so I work on an old resin tray I've had around for a while. Wasn't really crazy about the background. It was okay, it was pretty, but it just didn't have that wow factor. So I put this to the side for another illustration and I played with something that I don't normally play with for the coloring. So I'm gonna share the process with you. Man, it just turned out way in a different direction than I expected. Super excited about it. So do me a favor, hit that like button and hit the subscribe button because you never know what's going to happen next because I certainly didn't know this guy was going to happen the way he did. And I'm real happy to share it with you. All right, here goes the process. All right, so this is the resin tray I was talking about in the intro. It's kind of a nice tray, but it's just, there's no wow factor to it. But if you notice there uh, where the swerve of the neck goes, I saw it would be a great way of moving the dragon neck around. It would really flow with the piece and I can make those swirls work in my favor. So uh, again, with my other illustrations on resin, I start off with a chalk marker and it's a great way to roughly lay out your illustration, your design, your composition. Um, and you don't like it, wipe it off with, uh, with paper towel, super easy. Uh, edit, edit, and get it all tweaked out. And then once I get it to roughly what I want, I go and I take a Posca pen and I start refining those lines a lot more. Now, when I wipe this off, it's going to transfer a little bit of the chalk marker onto the Posca pen. So I will have to go back over it and do cleaner lines. And that's okay. I know this going into it. So that's why I'm only doing the simple lines for now. In previous illustrations, you probably have seen me go in and draw my lines and cover them up with chrome and then possibly go back over them with more additional lines on top of what I may have already drawn in. But with the resin, I really like playing with layers. And layers add a lot of depth to the piece. It can add a lot of dimension to the piece. And with even just doing a simple illustration, adding the multiple dimensions of lines and the shading and so forth add a lot of depth to it. So I really like playing with that and adding more and more lines to it. So here I am, I am going in and erasing the chalk marker. You get the original layout and I start working on uh, building up my lines, the outside lines, um, and starting to work on my shading. All right, so I bounced back and forth between two different nibs on the Posca pen. One really uh, large, I think it's one of the large bullet nibs, and one of the finer ones for the detail shading and such. The, the actual process of the shading is called crosshatch, and it's just overlaying different parallel lines within the shadow area and then you change your angle a little bit and another layer of parallel lines um, and you can build on that you can do minimal amount it does add a uh, character as well as a style to your piece I've been playing a lot with this type of shading lately and I really like it for the illustrative it adds a lot of detail but yet it also doesn't add a lot of detail I'm able to get convey the um, shadow in there without too much detail work, but it does add some refinement to it. So I'm really happy with this type of um, technique to the piece. So I know I'm getting to the point where I'm about to use the chrome markers, and I use the Molotov chrome markers, which are like playing with mirrors. Is is the wildest stuff. Uh, they work fabulous, especially with resin. They really uh, add a little bit of a punch to it. And I'm getting to the point where the outline's finished, but just it needs something more. It's just not there yet. 
And I think what it is is the dragon still disappearing in the background. The background is so, so dark. So I have another idea in mind. All right, so this guy is not yet finished. I got basic line work done, but I need to do, I think I need to add some color to him. I want him to pop out a little bit more from the background color that's going on with the resin. And I'm thinking about messing around with alcohol inks first. So I'll build up some color areas in here before I go back and do some more line work. So that's what I'm going to work on right now. Okay, so this medium I'm playing with right now is alcohol inks, and this is a new color by Pinata. It's called Opal, and this Opal has kind of a very, very fine iridescent type of a glitter mix with it, and I thought that that would make a really nice kind of an undercoat to the piece, so I thought I would apply it, and yes, it is sloppy. I am just throwing this stuff at it, and I'm just trying to get something to start with. I barely get any on my brush and I start to apply it a little bit more and a little bit more. The stuff dries super, super fast. So you're able to build colors if you want to by applying them with a brush in certain locations. So I am literally um, starting to pounce, I guess pounce is a good description of it, pounce the brush where I want to apply additional color. And I'm starting to play with the pouncing, and I realize that it's actually creating some kind of texture to it. And I start playing with that more and more. Now, there's I've got a couple other colors, and they're from uh, Resin Art. And the Resin Art's uh, specifically meant for resin. But in this case, if you add a little bit of alcohol, you can also use it as an alcohol ink. And it has an additional shimmer. Well, I've got two other colors. One of them's like a dark uh, aqua color. And the other one, I forget, it's kind of a ruby, uh, maroon type color. And I'm playing with them in the shadows and some of the higher points and then the scales and such. And I'm getting some really cool blends of colors. It's really making the shadows pop more. Um, I'm getting some purple hues out of it. It's just I'm having a whole mess of fun working with these two colors together on top of the opal color. It's really, I have to admit, I almost squealed when I saw this. Um, there's some undertones of golds and some metallics in the resin, and they too were showing through. So it gave it a really brassy kind of metallic -y feel as well in some of the areas. So, um... I'm going to get to show you a little bit of a close-up in just a moment. And I moved the camera around. You can really see the iridescence of the whole piece. I am going to have to explore with this a lot more because I really like the way it's it's turning out. So. Oh, yeah. I am stoked about this. I just built up different colors of alcohol ink and started playing with light and where the light would hit the scales and try to give him an iridescent quality. I think I'm there. Super happy with that. I'm gonna let him dry thoroughly and then I'm gonna start working on the line details and finish him up. Ooh, look at that. Some of that stuff looks like it glows. And I love the scaly look I was able to get with the brush. So that's fun, especially on the back there. I mean, that almost looks like it's rough. All right, so what I did do after the camera went off is I went back in on the teeth, applied a light coat of the opal onto the teeth, and I decided to go in and add a little bit of a white paint that I diluted down, did the same kind of tampering or pouncing with the brush um, to apply it lightly, and even used my finger to um, take away on the teeth. So... Now it's time for finessing. I am going back to the Posca pens, the black ones, and working again on my depth. Remember, I've added some colors to it. The colors are applied in a way that it's still transparent. Some of the areas, the colors are a little bit more dominant, but you will see some line work that I did originally before. In some places, you won't. So I want to make sure that I'm putting in some of that line work again. And that's okay if it's duplicated because I know the final piece, it will make sense. 
and I'm being more strategic with where I'm placing my lines. This, these are the parts that are really going to be seen. And uh, the next step, I'm going to be grabbing the chrome marker and we're going to be cleaning up the lines, especially with applying the alcohol ink. It went over some of the chrome lines and colored them. So I want to make sure that they, they are nice and clean. They, they pop and uh, work on my, you know, the points where the points meet and stuff like that, that they meet cleanly. Um, and then go in with even the chrome and adding some of the detailed hatchwork lines too. Because I think that really adds to the illustration. I don't do it all the time, but in some cases where I think it will add something to the piece, I go ahead and add it. And in this case, with the darker colors, I thought it might be really, really pretty and I'm happy with the results. What do you guys think? Do you think I should leave the uh, silver um, hatchwork lines or leave them off? Let me know in the details. Or not the details, I mean the description. <laughs> it's hard doing voiceover sometimes. Your tongue gets a little tied up. Anyway, I'm really close to wrapping this up and time to get ready for the close-up. Okay, I am super psyched with how this guy looks. There's a lot of layers in here. The line work really sets it off. I love the iridescent quality of the whole thing. And man, when I put resin on top of that, all of that is just gonna come alive. It really sets off the dragon from the background with the resin. Really happy with this piece. And the hardest part, gotta get the eye right or everything else looks off. Woo! I'm excited. What do you guys think? 